Good morning and welcome to our morning prayer on Monday the 1st of February. Great to have you join us this morning as we set aside just a small part of the day to really focus our minds and to commit ourselves afresh at the start of this week, at the start of this day, actually to God's care, to God's directing in our lives and to give God praise and worship that is due to his name. So I'm going to just simply follow some liturgy as laid out in the Church of England and their daily prayer app. So please do follow us at home and uh, enjoy this time of just dwelling and focusing on God and his word together. So, O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. And then our song of joy. O be joyful in all the Lord, sorry, O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now there's normally multiple psalms, so we've got Psalm 57, Psalm 96. So I'll just do the first of the two. So I'll do Psalm 57. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purposes for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those who have trampled upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down. They've dug a pit before me, and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations, for your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us, with all your people, the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Just a, a quick reflection. I only ever kind of do reflections on these as things kind of come to mind and, and stand out as I'm reading the passages rather than pre-plan anything. 
And I'm really struck recently by the Psalms, actually, the often ones of laments in the sense of there is a situation going on that the psalmist writes through and expresses. And then I love how you always have the counterpoint. So you have here in this psalm, here is an expression of grief and mourning and sadness because his enemies are coming against him in all sorts of different ways. But yet there is then the flip side where there is still the expression of praise and thanksgiving and song. And you often have in that psalm almost like instruction to ourselves, despite the circumstances, praise God and remember his goodness. And I think that's still so true for us in this time, in this season of, of change, of restriction, of COVID, of hope on the horizon. But yet there is still an uncertainty ahead of us. And my encouragement to you as you watch is, is today. Today might be a good day. You're watching this and, and therefore all is well and you feel able to watch this morning prayer. But there will be a day when it's not so good. And my encouragement to you to sing a song of praise despite how you might feel. And it's a conscious choice to worship God despite our feelings, for they are fickle. And be it the putting on you know, a piece of worship music to listen to, be it just standing in the house somewhere and just proclaiming and declaring the goodness of God, no matter what anybody else might hear or think, or bringing a psalm to mind and just reading it out aloud. And it's like remembering the goodness of God despite the circumstances and despite the situation. I'm always amazed at how my own spirits are lifted when I put on some worship music and I choose to worship. So that's my encouragement to each of us, myself included, as we go through these coming days and weeks, that this brings to heart and mind the goodness of God and to dwell in his promises and to give him praise. So glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So our Old Testament is Hosea chapter 9, and I'm going to skip that, and I'm going to do the, oh, the canticle, and I'm doing the New Testament, so the canticle. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though the night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawn in brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor the moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, your God will be your splendour. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. So our New Testament text is 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to the end. And if you followed any of my sermon series recently, which please do, um, the last five has all talked about our different giftings, callings and ministries that we might offer to God, to one another, to our communities. The one of the key passages I use was this one. Um, so I'm not going to say anything after this one. Um, obviously, please do go back through the Sunday sermons and just hear some of my thoughts and reflections around this. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body. So it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we're all baptised into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. 
and we're all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be the weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothed with greater honour. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. For God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the great gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. That's a good text. I would encourage you to go back over that text and reread and chew over numerous times. But in the meantime, let's pray. Father, this person is just making note of a Barbara who died back in 2017. Father, we pray for particularly the ones who wrote this note, but actually for all of Barbara's family, that Lord, it's still clearly in their hearts and minds as they remember this dearly loved one. Father, would you comfort and console this family? Father, would you give them that reassurance of your presence. Would you strengthen and sustain them, we ask in your name. Amen. Father, so it took a while to read this one. Lord, we pray for this mum and the six-year-old daughter. Lord, who is just struggling and feeling isolated and alienated from their family. Gracious Lord, would you be with her and her daughter? Father, would you help her? Would you grant her a real sense of your presence and your peace of heart and mind. Lord, would you bring into their lives those who might encourage and help and support them. Father, would you lead them in your ways? Would you protect them on every side from the schemes of the evil one? Father, I pray in some way there might be a reconciliation back with a family. So gracious Lord, would you be with this mum and their daughter, we pray. Amen. So let's pray more generically as well. 
Father, each one of us will know somebody who is struggling at this time. Be they friends, neighbour or family member. In a moment of silence, we remember them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our nation. Lord, with the distribution of the vaccines, the manufacture and production of them in an equal and fair way. Father, we pray for the ongoing leadership of our nation through our governments, that, Lord, you would bring to them wise counsel. You would use them, O oh Lord, to help us as a nation to get past this pandemic. Father, to enter into a season of recovery. And that, Lord, you would help us to always be mindful of those nations less fortunate than ourselves. Lord, indeed, help us to look after one another, but also remember those in need. May we continue have policies of generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at a more local level, we pray for all those who are struggling with so much loss and grief. We pray for our undertakers in our community, our ministers, who are helping families in their funerals and grief. The families struggling with the loss of a loved one. Father, would you be with each and every one of those? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the, I guess, the light on the horizon. Father, with the deployments of the vaccine. Lord, we thank you that it does feel as if an end is in sight to the pandemic and a new level of normality returning later in the year. Father, we thank you. The Lord be with each and every one of us. Help us to be bearers of good news, to bring to heart and mind those that we might ring and encourage and support. The Lord guide us this day, we pray. Amen. So merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for this day. God, our Creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief. Shine into the hearts of all your people and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer using the traditional form. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great that you could join us this day. Please do keep safe, keep in contact with one another and keep close to God in prayer and the study of his word. And look forward to seeing you in the fullness of time. God bless. Amen.